Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Game Up. I am your host Gamer K, and it's time for another game review for this week. And it's time to go ultimate with another classic of mine. Another Ben 10 video game. I didn't play the first Alien Force game. I never played Vilgax Attacks, so I kind of just played Protector of Earth, which was from the original series, and the second uh, season of the sequel, Ultimate Alien. Now, Cosmic Ben 10 Ultimate Alien Cosmic Destruction came out on October 10th, 2010, which I guess is kind of very fun. O 10, 10, 10 for Ben 10. I really like that. That The timing of that release was kind of very, you know, coincidental. Uh, so, once again, just like with the original game, with the other games, uh, the game does exist throughout the season of the show. During this one, a lot more things have happened. So, the story is another original idea from, from kind of like an episode of the show. It's kind of an episode episodic a bit from the show uh basically there's this giant storm going on in the galaxy while meanwhile on earth kevin gwen and ben are fighting some of volcanus's minions in the catacombs of the of rome which brings us to the first level which is the catacombs so i'm going so going story wise this game is kind of a bait kind of a globe trotting uh Kind of a globe trotting kind of game like we go to various locations around the world we fight off threats from the show and a couple that are just input for just for the game now let's take a look at the box let's take a look at the case so here we go cosmic destruction very nice graphic picture of ben 10 with the omnitrix and with five of it the aliens in their ultimate forms also bonus video and art gallery in there so that's basically all the concept art uh, from the game, uh, video is basically the creators of the game talking about how they did it and how they pitched it. And as you can see right here, unlock code for forearm. So it's an unlockable for the game. And for the Xbox version, they decided to give the unlock wrath, which all honesty, I didn't, I wish that they didn't do that. I wish they would include both of them and for both systems. Cause I don't like it when they do that, when they have this DLC for this system, but then they won't have it for this system. I don't like that. And then, you know, years later, they'll they'll do a remastered version or a collector's edition with all of them input them in, in there anyway. So, go ultimate. Collect, control all new alien heroes. Go ultimate to annihilate enemies. Battle against the destroyer of worlds. So, the story is based on, like I said, the globe trotting and obviously finding eight pieces of an ancient alien device called the Pultus Altiare, which will enhance the Omnitrix powers. Which is, vi which is very, you know, one-sided just for this game. It doesn't connect to the show with that. It's just its own idea for the game. And in the meantime, far, far away, there is a cosmic storm and a Toku star trying to destroy the world. For those of you who don't know Ben 10, Toku star Tokustar is the name of an alien race that are giant beings, which are uh, Ben 10's uh, uh, way big alien. And we get to fight a whole bunch of the other villains from the show as well. And the big twist near the end, I'll explain later. So the game is essentially a, a linear level a beat em up game with a couple pu with platforming and a bit of puzzle solving in each every single level. Uh, one of my complaints from the original Ben 10 game, uh, Protector of Earth, was that they only allowed us to use five of the aliens, and during that point in the, in the show, they had 12 aliens uh, basically unlocked, so we used less than half of them. This one, we get 11 aliens, but in each level, we can only use four. I mean, you can select which ones you want before the mission, However, in each level, the, you need three uh, aliens in order to progress to solve the puzzles and get through the, the barriers. Which, it sounds like a good idea, but if you want to mix and match aliens to fight in the levels, you can only use like one spare alien that you get to pick. Which, all honesty, is okay. But the aliens they have are good. They have 
uh, Spider Spider Monkey, they've got Swampfire, Humongosaur, Big Chill, Echo Echo, and the five other aliens from the ultimate from the beginning of Ultimate Alien. Water Hazard, Amphibian, NRG, Terra Spin, and Armadrillo. And then, you know, uh, Forearms for or Wrath for your eleventh alien. So yeah, having the ten aliens minusing way big, because he's only really there for the um for the final battle. Uh, so yeah, having the 10 aliens collectively and ha using four of them in each level, there's eight levels in the game and they all go around different places of the world. We start off in the catacombs of Rome, then we head to Paris, uh, then uh, Wyoming, China, Tokyo, the Amazon, back to the catacomb back to the catacombs when you go to the Colosseum, and then back to Tokyo, which... I gotta admit, they did pick some good locations to do all these in. And as far as gameplay goes, it's basically like the like the others. It's kind of beat them up. You fight various types of enemies. You fight, you know, you do that throughout the level until you finish them all and then you can progress. And one thing I love about each alien is that they each have their own unique uh, uh, special moves. Like, it's not like you have to do a combo they do. They have like their basic hits, and then when you push the button, you get four special moves for each uh, alien. Which and their special moves are very varied, and they each have their own uh, strengths and weaknesses. And as you collect points throughout each level, you can upgrade your character's speed, uh, endurance, and strength, and you can also upgrade the effectiveness of their special abilities, which I kind of like. It's the same way of how they did it in the other one. So, I really like how they did the upgrade system in this. They can just spend points to upgrade your character's abilities to make it easier as the game goes on. Although, a couple part sections will make you wish that you upgraded this particular character. I mean, if you got a good memory, you can remember which ones were in each level. So, let's see what else. Okay, so the fighting system is pretty good. It's basically beat em up. And then in each level, there's a section in the level where you will do the Go Ultimate. Where uh, in the catacombs, you use Humongosaur, Go Ultimate Humongosaur to fight off Volcanus' uh, Digger Minions. The, 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 the Ultimate sections are okay. I mean, they're basically just a part a bit so you can fight the, mo fight the bad guys, fight the enemies with unlimited use of the ult of the special moves and they do give them good it, it does do a good job of making you feel like you have control of the ultimate but they can only be used in certain sections of the game like each one gets once in every level spider monkey gets twice for some reason don't know why and then like near the near the end of the levels or when you do the mini boss off uh, and boss levels you will have to do like the QTE section where you will transform into one of the three aliens. You know, the three main ones that you pick. The extra one doesn't really count except for fighting. So you will transform. To e it doesn't matter which one you do. It just gives a cool cinematic of the scenario that's going on. And then afterwards, you will go ultimate and use the ultimate to fight the boss. Now, uh, the game's the game uh, that uh, the couple of the mechanics that are done in the game are puzzle solving and platforming. So, for example, uh, let's see. Uh, you will use Humongosaur to move heavy objects and put them in place. You will use Spider Monkey to swing from from spot to spot. Uh, you will use uh, Swamp Fire to light the noxious gases in order to create explosions. You will use Big Chill to put out fires and, gl and do gliding sections. You will use Echo Echo to um, create duplicates in order to do puzzles that require more people. You will use Terra Spin for platforming. You will use NRG to melt down uh, things in the level that need to be destroyed in order to progress or parts of a puzzle. You will use Armadrillo to activate uh, press switches. You will use Amphibian to, to charge electrical units. And you will use Water Hazard to put out fires, and pr basically hit pressure switches. So each alien has their own focus within each within a level, and that's something that's good. Each one has a certain purpose within the level. So 
I can't get mad at that, how each one has their own purpose. The, uh, the puzzles are really, really fun to, to do. Like, it took me a couple tries to figure out what to do, but once you get it, uh, it's not that difficult to do. Let's see, what else, what else do I got here? Uh, so the story is, like I said, the story is very unique. It fits like it could be like a couple episode part, like a like a part series for episodes in the show. Uh, unfortunately, the big threat that's like the Toku star is... It's kind of dropped a lot. Like, they only see him, like, after you complete each level or the beginning of each level. And it's just talking. Like, there's no big threat. Like, a, a good, like all the other aliens aren't... Re all the other enemies in this uh, in the game aren't really working for him. They're just, you know, coincidentally fighting Ben for the pieces of the artifact. So, yeah, it doesn't really matter. So, once again, the, the threat is established, but it just feels like it's dropped halfway through the game. So, there's... And, and it's a shame, because in the original game, the threats keep coming, and it feels like every one, every single one, the threat is there, as well as the, as the big threat for the end of the game. Unfortunately, once again, it doesn't feel like the threat is there. It's like an event... It's like in a movie where you know who the villain is, but then they don't really do anything for a good half of the movie until you get to a certain part of the movie, and then they're the big threat again. It's something like that, which is very basic and very bland for something compared for Ben 10, to be honest. The levels are very linear, but well-designed for each location. It just feels like there's not much life in it. And once again, with linear levels... It's something that's kind of a trend for games like this. That when they do linear levels, there's not much to explore. There's no... Uh, I mean, there are trophies to do, but there aren't ones for, like, in each level where you... Do, like, you have to find this, or there's a secret in each level. Or even trophies that you do with each character. There isn't. Which sucks. So basically, if you beat the game, you can pretty much unlock every single trophy. It's one of those games, but it's, yeah, it, it once you play it once, unless you want to do better and beat your score or something, yeah, it doesn't really, there's no real purpose in replaying it, except for nostalgic reasons. Uh, the enemies in the game are, are diverse, just like in the other games, which I love. Uh, they got the Forever Knights, they got the the Null Void creatures, they've got the Reds, which are the robot extermination devices, I think I've got that right. And in China, you got the Terracotta Warriors, which are put in the game just to have them in the game for China. Uh, the music, uh, the boss battles in the game are really fun. In each level, there are two boss battles. Uh, one as a mini boss, and then one with the big boss at the end. Uh, for one, uh, in the catacombs, we fight Volcanus, and then we fight Enoch. Like, for some reason, after we defeat Volcanus, Enoch was somehow in the Colosseum for all these years, absorbing the power of the artifact. Uh, yeah. In, in Paris, we have the Vredel brothers, and then... After we defeat them, we fight Sunder on top of the Eiffel Tower with Ultimate Swamp Fire. Uh, in Wyoming, we've got the Bounty Hunters from the original show, Crab and Six Six. Then in China, we get this Terracotta General, which all we basically do is fight off Terracotta Soldiers with Ultimate Big Chill and just do QTE sections for the General. So it's not really a boss fight, it's it's basically fighting all the enemies again and then just doing QTEs. And then we fight a, a dragon that's guarding the artifact, which I'm assuming was a robot considering how eff effective it was to the electrical to the electrical systems that we hit it with. In Tokyo, we deal with Zombozo and Cooper, who's being controlled by Siphon. Then we got to go to the Amazon where we 
do another ultimate section with the with the red soldiers, and then we fight uh, the Vredels again, and then in, and then we fight uh, Overlord, and then we fight Siphon. So yeah, the boss battles are fun. Each one has its own kind of gimmick that you need to use. Well, okay, the final bosses do more. The bosses at the end of the levels require a gimmick that you need to do. The other ones is just beat them up however which way you want. The other one, well, the final level bosses, the, the bosses at the end of the levels, they require you to do a certain gimmick, such as lighting something on fire or uh, destroying an object or getting something in place in order to fight the enemy the fight the boss. So, games like that, I do I commend them for making uh gimmicks for each boss. I just wish the game didn't feel so short because the game is at most 7 hours long for a game like this, that's okay. And for a completionist to get all the trophies, it's about 10 and a half hours long. I mean, it's not a bad and not only that, for eight levels, that's pretty good. And, I mean, if you die a lot, you, it's, you know, it would take longer. Not only, but as much as I, like, love this game and give praise to it, it does feel like they're, it's repetitive at most. It's very repetitive most of the time. Mostly, and I just wish that there were sections in the game, like you know, do a mini game with at which with each alien, something like that. But I guess they didn't want to do something like that, which I, I uh, con which I can sympathize with. However, there are some problems with the game. So, again, the linear sections make it feel like you're just going on this long route, and it's boring most at certain levels, especially halfway through the game. And the only additional thing you can do is collect three hidden sumo slammer cards in every level, which, uh, and not only that, if you die after you collect them, you gotta recollect them again. So, yeah, not only that, but I don't. I think this is just because the game is like ten years old, and I've been playing it on my PlayStation Three la this week. Uh, some of the music and sound effects in the game like where there should be sound effects or you know music there isn't which kind of upsets things it's like the minute the the, the cutscene happens it's all quiet although i gotta admit the, at least the voice acting is consistent and they got the original cast members to come back for the roles of the characters which i really love that they did that so 16 bosses eight mini ones eight main bosses. So the only comments I can really give on this game is that there's no real variety outside of doing the story. I mean, the original one at least had, uh, like after each section, we could go do and like test our strength against a brawl, a horde mode a little bit. But yeah, and because of the Ben 10 Omniverse and because of the, new Ben 10 that's out. I doubt we'll ever get a Ben 10 game like this ever again. Unless some developer thinks, you know what, let's go back to the original one, make a new game. I really hope that happens because it's games like this that make fans really love the original series, the original Ben 10, Alien Force, Ultimate Alien. A little bit on Omniverse, but the, because of the new one, it just feels like no one's bothering to look back on all these old games. And that's why I do these types of game reviews. Not to tell people to go buy these old games. Not to uh, not to hamper on them. But to celebrate or and sometimes ridicule these games. Because of how fun they were. Because they didn't go overboard. And I really hope game again, ben 10, this Ben 10 revives in video games in the future and we say goodbye to that garbage 2016 reboot so because its story kind of i like the animation in the game all the aliens that are from ultimate alien are here although i really would have wished to play i mean, i really would have wished to play as the other aliens from alien force and ultimate alien 
but they but they I guess they had it a budget and how many the aliens they could do. Uh, the level design is great. It really does feel like you're in the location. Uh, it's too, but its linear status makes it a bore to play, especially for long periods of time. The boss battles are fun. You get to fight the villains from the show, which I think everyone can agree would is awesome. Fighting the same villains that you wanted to f fight while watching the TV show. The story, again, unique. Feels like it's in the TV show, but it drops halfway through and doesn't even feel like the threat is there for the most part. And also, at the end of the fi the final battle, forgot to mention, is really, really fun. Where it's just big, way big against evil, way big. Just a big clash with a couple QTEs thrown in there for reasons. And then at the end, it turns out, for those who know Ben 10, the evil way big was just... Uh, Albedo, who was in a cosmic storm, tr uh, channeling that D Tokustar DNA to become an evil way big. Yeah, kind of a blame twist, guys. I mean, I, I kind of saw it coming a little bit just because of the evil way big's reactions to Tennyson. Like, how do you even know him? I don't think you haven't even met him yet. So... And then when they said about the ancient device, how only the Galvin knew about it, that's what got my mind going. So once again, the story drops halfway through. The aliens are really fun to play as with all their special abilities and just playing as them in general. Fighting of the villains, the, the linear levels kind of hampers it. And the lack of anything else to do... The game is pretty solid, but it doesn't it's not as epic as I remember it because of all because of its age and because of how I think about video games nowadays. So the fi my final verdict for Ben 10 Ultimate Alien Cosmic Destruction, which to be fair, we never even went into the cosmics, so it's just a cosmic storm, so get, get the title's a little bit of a lie. It gets a very odd but very sturdy 7 out of 10. It's a fun game to play. Like, just to play and relive your favorite... favorite Being your favorite aliens from Ultimate Alien. And just enjoying your an old classic. That's all I can say about this. That's, the, that's it for this week, ladies and gentlemen. Like, comment, subscribe down below. And coming next week, in order to finish off the month of May, we dive into the final part of a DLC where we really take down a tyrant, the tyrant of America. This is Gamer K, logging out.